Our call to worship comes from Psalm 31. Lord, you are our rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save us. For the sake of your name, lead us and guide us. And we're going to start with uh, a lovely perky jaunty hymn. It's called Come With Me, Come Wonder. And the tune goes, come with me, come wonder. But I'm sure when you've heard it once, you'll, you'll catch on. some opening prayers, uh, a prayer of confession and um, a prayer of uh, petition which picks up that idea of God being a strong rock. Let's pray together. Lord, if we grow tired of trying to do what is right, help us to make a fresh start. When friendships or relationships are strained or damaged, help us to make a fresh start. If we have no sense of our self-respect or that we matter, Lord, help us to make a fresh start. When our faith in you is dodgy or diminished, Lord, help us to make a fresh start. 
Lord, you never change. Your love for us is new every day. Each day you call us to turn to you so that you can refresh us and guide us. Lord, we know that because we're fra frail and human, sometimes our love grows tired and our faith is not developing. Forgive us and transform us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, so that everything can be made new. Amen. And a prayer of petition. Lord, in this uncertain world, we ask you to protect us and rescue us and make us safe in your love. This morning, may we listen to you and follow you. Make us safe in your love. Be a rock for us to hide in. A strong castle where we feel secure. Make us safe in your love. You are our rock, O oh God, and a strong defence. Make us safe in your love. Set us free from the things that ensnare us and tangle us up. Make us safe in your love. Only you can defend us, for you rescue us every day. We shall be safe in your love. Amen. Uh, Lorna, can, can you read to us from Acts chapter 7? Thank you. It's Acts 7, verses 55 to the end, and it's the stoning of Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw God's glory and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Of God. With a loud cry, the members of the council covered their ears with their hands. Then they all rushed at him at once, threw him out of the city, and stoned him. The witnesses left their cloaks in the care of a young man named Saul. They kept on stoning Stephen as he called out to the Lord, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not remember this sin against them. He said this and died. And Saul approved of his murder. Amen. Um, we're still in the Easter season. We're going to sing a hymn called Easter Jubilation. Easter jubilation fills the streets and towns Celebrations have begun Hear the music and the dancing now Join the laughter and the fun Oh, raise a joyful shout Clap your hands and dance, let your feelings out Oh, hear what it's about Christ the Lord has come to set us free Sorrows wipe your tears away For a better 
Um, John, can we have our reading from John 14? Thank you. Certainly, Katie. Uh, so it's John 14, 1 to 14. Jesus comforts his disciples. <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. There were not so would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and save him. Philip said, Lord, Show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know him, Philip? Even after I've been among you for such a long time, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me, who is doing the work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You are, may you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. Thank you very much. Is the Father in me that's doing the work? So I'm going to uh, reflect on the Father in Jesus doing the work and Jesus in us uh, doing the work. So... Yesterday, many of us, except dedicated Republicans, will have enjoyed a, a spectacle of great magnificence, uh, the like of which we probably won't see again in our lifetime. Um, King Charles and um, Queen Camilla, uh, amid, amidst pomp and circumstance, symbolism and ceremony, uh, were bound and anointed and enthroned and jolted through the streets in a 300 year old golden coach with no suspension drawn by eight horses at walking pace. I thought well at least when uh, Queen Victoria I'm sure the, the roads were cobbles so she would have been <laughs> jolted around a lot more than nice smooth asphalt but apparently the anointing oil came from a centuries old formula, olive oil from the Mount of Olives, perfumed with sesame, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, neroli, benzoin, amber and orange blossom. So I'm sure that combination uh, was rather lovely. And it was consecrated in, in Jerusalem. Um, so if you happen to go um, the pages of, of the Jewish Chronicle, which is uh, the weekly newspaper for Jews in this country, they would have pointed out that anointing kings goes back all the way to King Solomon in the Old Testament, uh, marking out anointing the king as, um, as God's representative, as it was seen at that time. So from ancient times, kings through to King Charles III have been anointed with oil. And people were praying for King Charles. And he started by saying, I don't come to be served, I come to serve. Like Jesus uh, on Maundy Thursday, uh, if you want to follow me, serve everybody. So there was an awful lot of um, Christianity in, in the service uh, yesterday. So let's think about the crowns, because 
in our acts reading we heard Stephen say that he had this mystical religious experience he saw the heavens open and Jesus in heaven at the right hand of the father which for the Jews was blasphemy the Lord our God is one God they had no conception of Jesus uh, God sending his son to to be our savior or well, they thought there was going to be a messiah but they didn't think Jesus uh, was it so crowns now strangely enough uh the name Stephen uh in Greek which is what we have our uh, holding up my Greek English uh New Testament here is Stephanos Stephanos is, was his name Stephen and the name for the, the word for crown in in the New Testament is Stephanos so they put on him a purple robe placed around him plaiting a thorny crown which is Acanthion um Stephanon Stephanos Stephen and Stephanos um crown so of course Jesus the only crown Jesus wore was the crown of thorns at his uh, crucifixion and it was recorded that this happened in Matthew's gospel Mark's gospel and John's gospel in very similar words now the crown for a king of course that they the Roman soldiers were mocking Jesus and said ha not much of a king are you and um making him him suffer with the crown of thorns but we are shortly coming up to Ascension Day, which is the time um, after Easter, Jesus ascending, uh, coming back from the dead, resurrected. When Ascension is when he went back into heaven and his disciples didn't see him in his post-resurrection body anymore. So Ascension, he's going up to heaven um, to be with his disciples and followers in spirit uh, but not in a, a bodily form that they could see and touch anymore and of course this is a vision that Stephen was given and it so enraged and provoked the Jewish leaders to whom he was uh, preaching basically it's a very long sermon um, in Acts 7 and it enraged them and they seized him out seized him took him out and stoned him for blasphemy and we hear that the one who's minding the coat, cloak will monitor, was a young man called Saul. Later uh, in chapter nine, to have his conversion experience on the Damascus Road, his Damascus Road experience. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So back to John 14, which is just says, it's the father in me who... Uh, is doing all these mighty works, the preaching, the teaching, uh, the many, many miracles, um, uh, water into wine, um, loaves and fishes for 5,000 people, many, many healings, bringing people back from the dead. It is the Father in me doing these things. And we believe that the only way that King Charles III can live up to his calling is through God in him, helping him, giving him the strength. Uh, one of the people they interviewed on Friday night on BBC One was a woman who had been the then Prince Charles's, now King Charles III's secretary. And she said, I worked for Margaret Thatcher, very hardworking woman, maybe got five, four, five hours of sleep a night very hardworking. She says, I've worked for two cabinet ministers, hardworking people. She said, Prince Charles was a harder worker than any of those. He worked harder. Um, and I think, right, well, I'm going to take that seriously. This is someone who's worked with him and you know, knows what she's talking about. All his life, he's tried to help other people. But the piece of work that's very close to my mind is the prince's trust and that's because a friend of mine's son um, was helped by the prince's trust he'd had some mental ill health he was living at home with his mum and dad and very 
kindly with support they got him on bits of work experience a little, little bit of time far 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 better help and support than lining up at the job center to sign on every week um and one of his work experiences led to a full-time job and then he was on his way again and um a, le- a friend of mine who we do messy tots with in Magdalene Way, her son has Asperger's syndrome. Uh, so problems in talking, understanding, social communication. And part of the plan with the Prince's Trust is they got him just applying for any old kinds of jobs, anything, anything at all. And one was uh, a job with the Chains Paget Hospital. And they wrote back to him saying, sorry, we don't have any um, vacancies at the moment, but we're going to go hold you on file. And they did, and they got back with it, touch with him in three months' time. And that's where he's currently working at the James Paget, where they bear with the things that he can do and he can't do. Um, and they are flexible enough. And, you know, he is very, very happy in that job. So the Prince's Trust helps youngsters who've been in trouble with the law, criminal justice system. Um, it, you know, I'm sure some people they can help and some people they can't, but for the sake of the people that they can help and will accept um, a second chance, yeah, they um, help with youngsters who have gone off the straight and marrow, perhaps abused drunk, uh, drugs or alcohol. Yeah. They give one-to-one personal help and the youngsters are help to understand that they matter and they deserve to have another chance, which is a profoundly Christian thing. If we love our neighbour, then we're saying that our neighbour matters, that our neighbour has value and that potentially God can work inside through that person. As you know, very, very long time ago, a Christian saint uh, was picked up and he, he... was taken to a a charity hospital and he was so disheveled they thought he was a tramp a gentleman of the road and they say oh this is worthless chap and he turned around and said to them in beautiful educated greek call no one worthless for whom jesus christ died call no one worthless for whom jesus christ died and surprise them because he was obviously an educated man and they didn't know and they thought he was just uh, a smelly tramp so the only thing that can sort us out that can help us go the right way transform our lives is the power of god working in us we can't do it in our own strength and jesus said it's the power of god working in me who's done all these things stephen had this amazing uh, revelation where he saw um, Jesus at the right hand of the Father and his dying words were, Lord, don't hold this crime, this sin against them. Um, And we remember Jesus's words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So Stephen, um, uplifted by this astonishing vision, could could ask for forgiveness for the people who were stoning him to death. Now, I got out this book recently, which is Our Doctrines. It's about the specifically Methodist emphasis in Christianity. And there's quite a few. There's uh, our Methodist thing about um, the social gospel, that um, there's no holiness without social holiness. John Wesley set up uh, work schemes for workers who've been laid off. He got them knitting and doing other things so that they could work. Um, He set up pharmacies, free dispensaries for people who had no access to medical care. He set up orphanages. You know, there's no holiness without social holiness. And again, King Charles understands this very well. You know, uh, you can't pretend to love God without loving your neighbour as well. And he spent his life trying to make things uh, fairer, better, easier um, for other people through the work of his Prince's Trust. But a Methodist uh, emphasis is God's love is graciously, with grace, 
imminent and active in our lives. We say God is both imminent and transcendent. God is both within us, imminent and transcendent, utterly beyond us, gloried in the heavens. And in the story of the stoning of Stephen, we get both. We get imminent in Stephen's heart, asking that God forgives those people and transcendent, a glimpse of God's transcendent glory, Jesus um, on uh, God's right hand. So back to crowns because we just had the coronation. Right. Uh, when we have a Holy Communion service, we talk about Jesus's crucifixion, death, resurrection and ascension. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come. So Stephen's story shows us that the ascension just isn't the ending of a particular time in um, for the disciples. It's a window through, through which we can glimpse the glory of our saviour, Jesus Christ, the son of God, at the right hand of God. And we acknowledge him as our king. We say that God has already crowned him, if you like. He's his son, he's at the right hand. And we even sing it in, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. Yesterday's throne was a, a 13th century, though, you know, it's quite, it's a wooden chair, still there, preserved throughout the centuries. That's where the anointing took place, the most holy and sacred bit. But we know that we have a saviour on a throne in heaven who is powerful to turn us round, uh, sort out our messed up lives, and who one day we can cast our thrones before him, lost in wonder, love and praise. Amen. We're going to sing uh, Come Host of Heaven, and this was the one Tony had the most trouble finding a good uh, track for, but we'll do our best. Come host of heaven.
Uh, so now we've we've got our prayers of intercession. Uh, and I'm going to say, Lord, we love you. And will you please say, work in us. Lord, we love you. Work in us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the crowning of our king and queen. We thank you that he's a king who, like you, comes to serve and not be served. We pray that we will do all that we can, all in our power, to help and serve others. We ask that you bring about a world that's free from warfare, oppression and need. We pray for an end to the war in Iraq and the fighting in Sudan. We pray for help for those affected by the earthquakes in, in between Turkey and Iraq. We pray, Lord, that all of us will see the need to build a fairer, better world. Lord, we love you. Work in us. Lord, our nation, our, our country is hungry for a sense of community, true community where people look after and care for each other. Hungry to belong and be needed and to serve. Lord, we pray for a world that all feel of worth, that everyone feels cared for, that everyone has respect both for others and shown to them. So we pray for all those who care for the least, those who pray, uh, care for homeless people, those who care for those struggling with addiction, alcohol or drugs or any kind of addiction. Lord, we love you. Work in us. We pray for, after our recent um, election for Great Yarmouth Borough Council, we pray for those who lost their council seats. We pray that you'll be with them to help them and support them at this time of change. We pray for all of our existing councillors. We pray for the new councillors who've uh, just been recently elected on Thursday, that they will learn their job very rapidly, that they will have a sense of service to our area, Great Yarmouth and the surrounding area. So we pray for all of the councillors, Lord, independent, like the councillor in Martham, Conservative and Labour. We pray that they will all unite, uh, work across uh, political boundaries and work for the good of every person who lives in our district, uh, our borough council area. Lord, we love you. Work in us. Lord, we belong to churches where we long for a vision of the future, where we long for people to come in and get to know you and love you and serve you. Lord, we pray that you will uh, rekindle all of our commitment and you will give us a true sense of direction. We pray for the new minister, Judith, and her husband who are coming um, to live in Great Yarmouth um, in August. We pray for her remaining studies in Birmingham and we pray that you will help us settle in and thrive and flourish as a probationer minister in our circuit. Lord, we love you. Work in us. Lord, we pray for one another. We pray for people who are lonely, anxious, low in spirits, those who are bereaved and those who are unwell in body or mind or spirit. And I particularly pray for Jean Fisher, who is in the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital at the moment. Lord, be with her as she waits to go into a hospice. Lord, we love you. Work in us. Lord, we um, bring our prayers to a close by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer in the traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. And our last hymn this morning is summoned by the God who made us. Summoned by the God who made us, rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid, varied ways, sing a new church into being. risen from the water, robed in holiness and light, male and female in God's image, male and female God's delight. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid varied ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and praise. Trust the goodness of creation, trust the spirit strong within, dare to dream the vision promised, sprung from seed of what has been. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid varied ways, sing a new church to being one in faith and love and praise. Bring the hopes of every nation, bring the art of every race. With a song of peace and justice, let it sound through time and space. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid Buried ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Draw together at one table all the human family, shape a circle ever wider and a people ever free. Let us bring. Thank you. And we're going to finish our Zoom worship this morning by saying the grace all together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. <laughs>